Hello, Blues. Welcome to episode four of the Manchester's Blue Transfer Podcast. It's same sit, same studios we're all in, apart from I'm the only one that seems to have a wash because I've got a completely different top on, whereas these lot have kept the same foisty tops I've had on since episode one. Uh, anyway, digressing from that. I don't know why I brought that up, but either way. Um, episode four is a special, in essence. These three admins that are joining me today are a manager for five, ten minutes. Um, basically, I'm going to ask each, each and every one of you... <laughs> One dream playing today can't bring back a player that's died or be or retired or anything like that. The one player that if you had the money, you'd sign that would a fit this style of play that Pep plays. B, we can afford, and C, is likely to happen. So Halifax, you said you wanted to go last, and well, that sounds yeah. you. Curveball. So we started off with Cloud in the first episode, so we'll go back with Cloud again. Number one, one number one, you're one man. Our girl in Laney's uh, case. So I'd probably say Husamala from Leon. Uh, I think he's a brilliant player, given where Gundogan and De Bruyne are age wise and how young he is. I think we could bring him in. I think he can bring something to the midfield. Um, and one for a few years to come. So I would probably say him. I think he's realistic. I think he's a pet player. He's technical. He's got a great work rate. He's versatile. Um, yeah, I think he'd be a brilliant addition to midfield instead of moving Bernardo Silva from the right wing into midfield. He's great there, but something different. Yeah. How much do you reckon you'd probably be able to sign him for? I don't think he's had a new contract. So I reckon, I think Arsenal was supposed to be getting him for, I think, Leon said they want 50 million. I reckon 40 to 50 million euros we could probably get him for. No, but he, he, he definitely, would he be one of them? I know in the previous episode we talked about uh, would they be the right fit? Would, would he get into your starting 11 ahead of anybody or would you implement him in a, a gradual? I think it would have to be gradual because the way that he plays for Leon and the way that Pep plays, similar to Ferran Torres, Ferran's a great player with the attributes, just a few little things, you know, tracking back. Mark his man, get in the right position, those sorts of things. And the only way you can get that is over time. And midfield is so, it's so based on chemistry. It's so important to Pep. I mean, a lot of the times Pep, you look at the, the squad, he's basically fielding 11 midfielders sometimes. Um, so it's so important. I think it has to be a gradual process. But given Gundogan and De Bruyne and the, fir- the form they're on, barring any injuries, that's not a problem. Yeah. In, in terms of his role, would you prefer him to be more of the De Bruyne type, a bit more attacking, or would you prefer him being that linchpin between the defensive midfield and the attacking midfield? That, that, any, I, think any linchpin, I think linchpin. I think he would be better off in the Gundogan type role. You know, and like Gundogan does, he'd be a bit of a fox in the box at times and score those goals. I think he would do better for that because if De Bruyne is not there to play his role, uh, it would then come down to me, okay, what would I play hour in, in that role when I can bring Foden in and play Foden in his right role and I think Foden would be better in that anyway so yeah, that's why I'd probably go down that route Brilliant, great name to start us off with Lenny yeah, right. say Steph Newton <laughs> no, I was going to be Kate Winslet no, um, I've, I've, I've been really good you know, I've avoided the obvious of Harland because that, that was going to be my obvious choice um, it actually touched on what Halifax said in the, the first episode about the, uh, you know, touching on uh, KDB getting into his 30s and stuff. I look back a couple of years, we had Silver and KDB in the midfield and they were bossing it. Now we've got Phil Foden coming through left-footed. Um, De Bruyne are now getting, he's past 30, he's getting on a bit. Uh, there's a player at Anderlecht called Yari Vasharan. He's 19 no years old. Well. I've seen some videos and the clips. He play, obviously plays Belgium as well. He, in my opinion, could potentially be the next KDB. He, this season, he's got 17 appearances. So he started 13 games, subbed four. He's got five goals and three assists, which doesn't sound massively great. You know, but, you know, it's Belgium league, but he's young. KDB, at the same age, went on loan to Werder Bremen, played 33 games, scored 10 goals and nine assists. So he's pretty much, you know, he's on par with what KDB was achieving at that kind of age. Obviously, company... Is in charge over at Anderlecht, so a deal could, I think, quite easily be done. Um, 
and I think he could be bedded in just like Foden has been, you know, on the right hand side. Or, you know, and I could see both of them playing well together. Um, but to me, that's it's, it's looking to the future of what we're going to do after KDB's gone. Because obviously, with David Silva, we did, have never really had anything in place apart from this lad who came through our academy out of nowhere. If Phil Foden hadn't come in like he did, we'd be fucked, to be quite frank, with that sort of creativity, you know, from nothing. Um, so, yeah, he, he'd be mine. I think you, you could probably get him for less than 20 million. And I think, like I said, I think I'd like to be happy to offload him to City. I'm sure City would send a young player out on loan to handle extra season to cover that that loss that they'd get. Um, yeah, and then I think KDB would take him under his wing and just say, look, this is what I do. Copy me. So, the same question to you as I said to Cloud. You, you've sort of touched on it a little bit. How would you implement him into the team? <coughs> not, not necessarily because obviously he's only 19 and he plays for the Belgian League, whereas <coughs> oh, he's, he's an established central midfielder. I think yeah. he's somebody that could come in and make a name for himself in the first season. I know v- Vasharin, I can never pronounce his name, Vasharin. He does play on the right wing a couple of times, if I'm correct. Yep. He's very versatile on the right side and attacking midfield. Where He's would the, you, because remember, you're the manager right now in this yep. frame of mind, where would you start him off and how would you see his natural progression into the team? See, to me, he is literally the mirror image of Phil Foden. So right. depending on who I was playing, depending on what the rest of the team was, depending on where he played. But like, whereas Foden can play left side of central mid or left wing, the Vasharan would be right side of centre mid, like where KDB would be, all right on the right wing. Um, and again, after seeing what what I mean, I, I think Phil Foden's been bedded in too slowly. I don't think he's used enough, especially not this season. There's been games where we've been screaming for him to be on, and I think he should have been on. Um, with Vasharan, obviously he's coming from the Belgium league, which is a lot slower, so he is going to take a time to to adapt. He's got to be starting League Cup matches. I'd probably be starting him in FA Cup matches as well, depending on who we were playing. Other than that, it would be a case of, as I would with any young player, strongest squad for the first 60 minutes, batter the shit out of a team, and then when they're crawling away with the pants around their ankles, crying, just send him in for a quick in-out and, and do the job around other established players. Just breed him in like that. Yeah, I know. I know the player. If I'm perfectly honest, I don't know too much about him other than the positions he plays. But I'll take your word for it by all accounts. Halifax, he's, he's, do you, he's uh, good on you the ball in terms to... of dribbling? He, he can dribble a lot, and you know he's quite quick. But mm. out of nothing like KDB, he can find a long distance pass, just a, like a diagonal that goes past defensive players, and all of a sudden it's there with the attacker. He's he's quite his vision's really good. So the natural progression of when KDB eventually retires, if uh, you know oh, we've got him for another. Another few years yet, so uh, hopefully that doesn't happen anytime soon. Go on then, Alifax. You wanted to go last because uh, a you were a bit <laughs> unprepared as per usual, but b you uh, apparently have got a stormer of a name. No, no, I ain't got a stormer of a name. I just didn't do any research before it. So I've just put it all. <laughs> and do you know what? Listening to you two, I feel like a rain knob because uh, mine ain't like oh, I've unearthed this diamond. It's got to be Mbappe, right? <laughs> Whoa, whoa, whoa! Before everybody jumps on the back, no, 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 I'll manage it. But is it before you get into it? I just want to answer you one, one, one Have question. Have I funded it? Can we? Is it likely that we can afford him or sign him? That that's how I'd start right. you off. We go deep We're currently it. in the year twenty twenty one. Mbappe's deal runs out thirtieth of June twenty twenty two, so he's only got a year left on his contract. And due to Bosman rules, in six months, we could technically talk to Mbappe and not breach any rules to sign him for free at the end of the year. So, just saying, won't be bad. And Top I'm, not, I'm not being funny, right? He absolutely speaks for his scent. He's 22. He's won no end of leagues in, uh, in France. Easy league, I'm not going to deny that. The way we went for him massively when he was 18, 19, when he knocked us out in Monaco... Pep was going meeting with his dad and law. We we really went in for him and he turned us down. Which I don't blame him. He's a French lad. He probably thought I'll go with. But honestly, I, 
I honestly think the revenues he bring. I mean, I do slag it off in previous episodes about signing a ready-made player, but if you imagine getting Andepi on a free, even if he's shit, how many shirt sales he'll have? I don't think he would be shit though. I think he just fit fit with us perfectly, and I'd, I, I'd love to hear an argument how he wouldn't. And Chris, I can see you shaking your head, but. <laughs> and, I'm not going to lie, I nearly fucking went for Neymar because I think Neymar would fit with perfectly or not. Oh, I, no. Even right, I'm Neymar, like... listen, listen. I'm, gonna, I'm doing two then, fuck it. <laughs> Neymar. <laughs> <laughs> Cloud, I'm hoping you're backing me up with this. Take the thumb next. Go on. Go on. Right. Take your argument. So, so, first of all, Mbappé, is, are we actually arguing about Mbappé? Yeah, go on. Give me your case and yeah, go on. No, um, mate, M- Mbappé is fucking sick. I don't need to fucking. I don't. Even, I don't even no. think I needed to argue this. Where would you play? Uh, left wing. All right. Playing... I'm playing yeah. left wing. I'm playing right wing. I'm playing up front. And I'd when you're, when you're a striker, out. but you're playing on the wing. <laughs> I'd play him anywhere. I'd play him right back if I had to. And I tell you now. When we sign him in 20, end of 2022 for a free, we're going to Munich to 2023's Champions League final. I'm telling you. I'm just playing in Champions League, easing him in as well. Just playing in Champions League to win us league. Oh. You'd ease my back in. <laughs> I'm telling you. I I like, you, you, said to make about, you said to make about shirt sales, and now we'd be like a commercial success. Yeah. Um, but with the shirt sales, we just receive a flat fee from Puma. So That's selling, selling more shirts isn't really going to help us. But the problem I would have with him, the transfer value is fine, but when he's free, every top club's going to want him and it's going to be who offers him the biggest stimulus package, who's offering the biggest wages, which is going to ruin our wage structure with all our other stars. What I would say, if you're looking for a ready-made product, um, and if I was looking one for striker, I thought you might, I thought you were going to say Lukaku, honestly, because of his recent form. I thought you were going to go with someone like that. Halifax was a big shout for Lukaku halfway through the year. Yeah, I was. But then I I thought, do you know what? I I thought, I'm going to look at Mbappe's deal. And when I thought he runs out, I thought, that's reasonable. Lukaku, I'm not paying 70 million for Lukaku. 75 million or whatever they're quoting for him. I I took piss out of so many Man United fans paying that. I can't bring myself to pay it. (laughs) I'm talking as if I'm actually paying it. (laughs) But no, uh, I love the whole of that. Right. All, all I can say, I'm not joking. Like Mbappe, he joins City for free. He's the biggest deal of the transfer window. Everyone's buzzing. Fucking Dan Halifax having another good uh, tug with his new shirt and everything. And <laughs> the only thing that popped in my because you said, "Oh, what could go wrong?" The one thing that popped in my head was Valerie Bodging off, and I could just yeah. see the opening game of the season, just a quick turn and always oh, down. That's him. Gone. Yeah, but mate, you can. <laughs> I can see it now. Well, everybody's selling fucking uh, Leonardo Ninja Turtle masks outside Etihad for Mbappe coming. Because <laughs> it does look like a Ninja Turtle. Nobody can tell me he done. He does, <laughs> does. You know what he looks like? He looks like uh, Liverpool former keeper, Duda. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. And, uh, there was but, something going around about 20, I think it was 22 years ago, Duda <laughs> played in the French League and he won a, he won a cup there. There you go. Ray. <laughs> Miller one, Neymar. Part. Neymar co- contract runs at the same time. Hang on, are you being serious? I thought you were taking yeah. this. Yeah, I thought you were taking the piss. No, mate. mate if, I, you, if you want somebody no. like Neymar, an actor, then, I'm yeah, sorry, right. we've got to go Kate Winslet. <laughs> Kate Winslet has already got a proven record at City of yeah. winning us games. He's a diving bastard. He's a diving bastard. But, mate, I think he, he is a great player. I don't care. I think... You watch his skill. The way he whipped balls in from corners, free kicks and that. But him coming to City, he wouldn't be the big fish. And I do think that would help him. And maybe, let's let's be right, in, in, in the French League, if PSG knock us out, we're right not bad here. But in French League, you're playing Champions League midweek and then you're playing some bloke <laughs> who just finishes postman shift. Do you get what I mean? He's, he, I, I, I do agree. Can... He's a phenomenal player, but we've got four players who play left, who can play left wing for us. Yeah, but I, I, yeah, true. But I still think 
I, I'm more thinking for the season after, if I'm honest, because I didn't do any homework before this episode. So <laughs> <laughs> you're looking at left wingers, though. Gareth Bale, he's just got a hat trick today. You know, I think he's <laughs> <Stop it. laughs> hey, See, if he's done it tonight, it's been, been four weeks ago that game started. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I thought you were taking the mick out of Neymar is, you know how. The only way I see Neymar in this city team is, you know, in prison, you get the different types Sea of bags. Gas. No, <laughs> no, but uh, it is similar lines. You get the tough, hard nuts, the guys who hang around the gym. You've got De Bruyne, you've got Ruben Diaz, you've got Edison, the psycho holding the bars. Then you've oh, got... You, oh, you've my got bitch. The normal. Neymar's got the normal. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you, name on the whole Edison's pocket. People that just <laughs> hang around the what have you. And then you've got Neymar. <laughs> the, the pretty boy. That's how I see Neymar. Neymar is the type of player that's going to come in and he's going to be holding the soap at the end of the game in the showers. That's how I see Neymar. He, don't get me wrong, on his day, he's a phenomenal player. But he is the biggest A cheater and B whiner. Edison will not stand for that. Edison will be gaining one, so he won't be bothered. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm just, they were my two. I like how we didn't argue about anybody else's, but we fucking <laughs> mine. <laughs> I do agree with you with that, hey. I did agree with you with that. After that. Okay. Okay. That, yeah. I'm surprised. Do you not remember? It was a couple of seasons ago. We'd have been arguing about Dunk. Mm. That was him. True. <laughs> Shout out, Steve. Oh. Good old Steve. Steve Rowney there. Dunk. Yes. Spunk for Dunk. What I loved about that was you going, all right, I'm not going to pick the obvious one. I'm not going to pick Haaland. I'm going to try and be, be a bit sensible. Very next one, Mbappe and Neymar. <laughs> 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 oh. Right. Well... I'm I'm going to jump in with this as well because you know me, I, I like talking absolute tribble about transfers. So there's one player that I'd really love and he plays a Feyenoord. Uh, so yeah, another Dutch player and that is Oscar Vendt. Uh, he's a left back for Feyenoord. He's 22 years old now. Phenomenal left back. He's so underrated. I've, he's the perfect player. He's a tough brute. He can defend well, cut crosses, intercept. And he can get involved with an attack as well. He's literally the perfect pep player. So I, I, I think he's a name for the future. And uh, yeah, if I was a manager, I think we'd probably get him for about 20 mil as well. Uh, but you know what Tix is like with uh, we'll end up signing him and then uh, keeping Mendy and playing Mendy first choice. You know what he's like. But, but yeah, he's my go. So is there any... I, I don't know if I should ask Halifax this. Any other standout players that... I've got one. <laughs> Manfred. <laughs> Manfred Ugalde. Ah, fuck you not. Fuck you piped up now, are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's... Uh, Go on, then. Plays for Lomo SK. He's part of the City Football Academy group, or whatever it's called. He's played 22 games for Lomo this season, scoring 11 goals and getting three assists <laughs> in 18. So ah. if you want to knock out De Bruyne or Aguero, which, which ones are you taking over from? He's a striker, he's Aguero. His first game is <laughs> called Perfect Tactic. Left foot, right foot, Ebba, bang. Hang, hang on, how many games <laughs> have he played, sorry? 22. And how many goals? 11. So he got in 20 first game games, out. he's only scored eight goals in 20 on other games. <laughs> he's 18. And he's Costa Rican. <laughs> <laughs> Right, well, I'll, I'll hold that name. I'll hold that name for the future. Anyway, boys, this was supposed to be the quickest quick fire round of all the episodes. Yet it seems to have taken the longest that. So, uh, every take it piss. Go on, Mbappe. <laughs> but yeah, if, if anybody has got anything else to add, you are the managers. At, at Laney, try and keep away from the board. You're just the manager. You're not the owner, so we're not was, changing I was anything. Being good. I was being good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, if anyone else has got anything else to add? I'm surprised I have mentioned the... Uh... Oh, sorry, who was that? Liam Delap. Liam That's the only, that's the, only the name that I'd probably throw in. Well, he's not exactly what we'll bring him. But no, no, let, let's touch on him before we disappear quickly. I just wanted to have a look and just see what his numbers were for this season. So I don't get to watch like, every, you know, 
every game of the academy. But he's uh, 21 goals this season and four assists in the Premier League, Premier League two, obviously. Um, you know, 18 years old. So he's put up massively from last year. So he's still banging them in. And I'm just thinking, going the other way, instead of looking for prospects elsewhere, we might, you know, eventually we've got to consider we might actually have one under our noses. He's only really been tried in, what, two games? Oof. One of them being the Leicester game, where we lost 5-2, so... Good on his debut, though, didn't he? Yeah. And he did hit is the post it, in that game as well. So it head, wasn't it? It is a fun fact for you about uh, Liam Delap's goal scoring record in Premier League Two. The highest goal scorer ever in the Premier League Two got 15 goals. So Delap's fucking smashed it. So, so we best but, not let him go. Because there were talks, obviously, before <laughs> he, he, about what half a year ago he was supposed to be confirmed going out on loan. And then recently, he's uh, apparently definitely signed up for the first team. And then it's only just come out in the past couple of weeks. I've seen that he's uh, he's been scouted to go back out on loan again. So it's I, a bit of a... I feel if he goes out on loan, he's never coming back. Yeah. yeah. Have him yeah. arrive one year, but say, look, you are playing in the league. Like, not, not the Premier League, but you are playing in the league matches. You are, you know, not just, I will field you for 15 minutes here. No, you will start in some of these games. Show, show us what you've got. Yeah, we'll take a bit. Otherwise, if he goes out in line, it's not coming back. You know, no. remember when we, we were getting excited about players like Jan Kuto going on, coming in, and then immediately where the hell line, so, Yeah. <laughs> no. We'll I, say this about the lab. Just interrupting. Sorry, he, we no. obviously signed him from Derby, right? And the rumor was he was going back to Derby. If Derby get relegated, I can't see Sydney sending him on loan to Derby in League One. No. So. I know the perfect team. If Swansea don't get promoted this season, send him there because they'll need an... Jamal Lowe will be going back off his loan. They, they all, they've got um, Cooper in charge. He plays young players. He does really well with the young players. Um, you know, they're, they're obviously, you know, in playoff places this season. The, every year, that they had Rian Brewster. You know, he made a name for himself scoring for Swansea. No, it was got, shitty um, Chef you, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, Ollie McBurn, Ollie McBurn, he did really well for Swansea. Then he went to Sheffield, he's done crap. But I, I think the lab would fire away in the championship. But there is one other name I was going to mention as well, who I think, I don't know what position he plays. I think he could possibly end up as a striker. It's um, Benjamin Aguero. He's only small. He, he's, he's young. He's got a lot of potential. That name rings if a th- bell. If you, if you think, his dad is... Sergio Aguero, his granddad's Maradona, and his uh, godfather is Lionel Messi. If Benjamin Aguero, the highest striker in the world, it, then let's well, yeah. But if Benjamin Aguero is not going to be a world beater, then you know, you watch him now; he'll become a rugby union player or something like that. Yeah. To be fair, though, I put a post out not that long ago. You've got Vincent Company's son coming through. You've got Joe Hart David Silver. coming through. David Silver's son Matteo. You've got Raheem Sterling's son that. For his age, can lever a ball. Have you seen a couple of videos yeah. that Sterling's put up? His son, mm-hmm. I think he's only about what two. Yeah, Kicks the ball out of that punch brick walls. Not that punch brick walls, oh, but yeah. you know what I'm saying. Jim Whitley's lad as well at Blackpool. Mm-hmm. There's so many ex city players and current city players that are bringing a lot of kids through. We can adapt the city families. Appaletta's kid as well. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of players out there that were good solid not necessarily the best players in the world but solid players and they've got a good pedigree about them bring them through the ranks stick them in City's academy what a story that would be who knows in the next 15 20 years we could have the old guards times two yeah. never know I That's think Harlan's lad he, he, he's got, he was a City fan at one point Exactly. Well, hey, hey, hey that's <laughs> a good point. You hit the nail on the head for that well, that's one. It. Yeah, I know we were going about about Raniola, that, that Raniola, whatever his name is, that toss pot agent. Raniola. Yeah, he also he also has um, his dad helps with the agency side of it. So once he gets the deal, he he, he might just settle down and piss that toss pot off. I think Sam Lee said somewhere that City aren't <laughs> totally against working with Raniola if they have to. Um, so it's probably quite reputable. They're, you know, they're willing to sit down at least. But we have got other players who are managed by Rayo. I believe uh, Felipe Sandler 
No, obviously he's not in the first team, but he is actually managed by Rayola. So we haven't completely seven ties with him. We just prefer not to. Yeah. Well, only time will tell. Who knows? It uh, could be Haaland leading, leading our team out next season. Who knows? Like, it could be Mbappe on the wing leading out a team up front. Or Neymar. Oh, Mbappe, Haaland and Neymar. What a front three. Oh, yeah, you took piss out that earlier. <laughs> <laughs> right, in the words of Tom Brunt, we are digressing. So we're going to leave it there, Blues. Uh, I know you've been stuck me for four episodes and so are these lads, so... We've all filmed it all in one night. I know I've taken a mix. So just want to say a big thank you to three lads for joining me on the first four episodes of this. And hopefully you can join me on the next next few whenever we get round to recording them. But uh, thanks for joining me, boys. Thanks for watching Blues. Hope you're all staying safe. Remember to like and subscribe to hear more of Laney's innuendos, Dan Halifax's perfect player positions, and Cloud's just <laughs> shutting everyone down saying, nah, I don't agree with you at all. <laughs> but yeah, thanks very much, boys. Hope you're all well. See you later. Bye. As Sick Dave always says, see you till I die. That's the one. Now I've just got to remember how to stop recording again. Take care, Blues. See you later, guys.